Hi, I'm Dean. A few years ago, my parents died in a car accident, and my older sister Sue became my guardian. We got on like a house on fire, but one day she brought her fiancé to the house. Luke turned out to be such a nasty guy. We fought all day about nothing. Sue, at those moments, covered her ears with her hands and ran to her room. She couldn't take sides because we were both very dear to her. We lived in such an unhealthy atmosphere for a whole month until one day Luke capped the climax. That day, I came back from school with my best friend Brian. We were going to play video games console, but when I went into the living room, I didn't see it in its usual place. I thought Sue had done the cleaning and moved it somewhere, but she said she didn't touch anything. When Luke came home from work, I asked him, and then he said, Your console was just gathering dust and taking up space. That's why I sold it. I blew a gasket. Not only did this bastard sell my thing without asking, he also pocketed the money earned for it. I decided to take revenge on him. The next day, I shot a very interesting video. In it, Luke threw the garbage past the waste container and calmly walked on. I sent this video to the mail of an environmental organization in which my future relative was a top manager. A terrible scandal broke and Luke was kicked out of work. He came home sad, and I floated on a cloud. It served him right. The mood was just festive, and I went to party with a feeling of satisfaction at a job well done. But when I came back, I saw a big bag on our porch. My things were inside. It was very strange. I put the key in the lock, but it didn't fit. I started banging on the door with all my might. A sleepy Luke opened it for me. We changed the locks. Sue got pregnant and she can't be nervous. And because of your antics, she's constantly on edge. We talked and made a decision. You'd better stay with your aunt. I couldn't believe it and asked to call Sue, but Luke said she wasn't feeling well and had already gone to bed. He didn't even let me pick up the phone, which I had put on charge earlier in the day. Luke was much stronger than me, and getting into a mix-up would be some kind of madness. Therefore, the only thing left for me to do was just to pick up the bag and go to my aunt. I took a taxi, and in a couple of hours, I was in front of her house. My aunt, as always, greeted me very warmly, gave me tea, and fed me delicious cheesecake. But when I started talking about the move, she suddenly stopped smiling. Dean, we don't have a room for you. I can live in the sitting room, but we won't be able to provide for another family member. Uh, I'll get a part-time job after school and help. In the end, my aunt ran out of excuses and she refused me directly. I picked up my bag and crashed Brian's place for the night. But in the morning, he said that his parents had only allowed me to stay for one night. I started thinking about what to do next. And then Brian came up with a crazy idea. What if you live at school? It's warm and there's food and you can sleep in a room with sports equipment. Then I didn't even take Brian's words seriously, but I decided to leave my things there as to not drag around with them. I got to school early and stuffed my bag into my locker. I was walking around all day looking troubled and this was noticed by my classmate Amanda, who I had liked for two years. Imagine, she invited me to the cinema after school. I just couldn't miss such a chance and immediately agreed. We had such a great evening that I even forgot about my problems. But when I walked Amanda home, they reminded me of themselves because I had nowhere to go. I wandered the streets for several hours and got terribly hungry. And when it got dark, I went to the first coffee shop I came across, ordered coffee and a lot of food. After a hearty dinner, a waiter came up to me with a terminal. I attached the card, but the money was not debited. And then I realized that I had spent every last cent at the cinema. In order to not arouse suspicion, I ordered another dish from the waiter. And as soon as he walked away, I was off the coffee shop like a dirty shirt and rushed away from this place. The night turned out to be not too good. I spent it at the stadium and froze to a shiver. That day, for the first time, I came to school before everyone else. Brian's idea didn't seem so stupid to me anymore. It was really great at school, and I decided to stay here for the night. But Amanda ruined my plans. At recess, she invited me to her party after school. I hesitated. On the one hand, it was stupid to miss such a chance to get closer to Amanda. And on the other hand, I really didn't want to spend the night on the street again. I still refused Amanda, and she was offended. At least Brian promised to make sure that no one approached her at the party. After class, everyone went to Amanda's, and I was left in an empty school. 
Before closing it, the guard began his rounds. So that he wouldn't spot me, I hid in a library, where no one even dropped in during the day. I sat there for several hours and was afraid to come out, but when I was desperate for the restroom, I just had no other choice. I tiptoed to the toilet, and when I came out, I heard the loud snoring of the guard and laughed. There was no need to be afraid of anyone, and this noble employee was definitely not worth it. I hadn't eaten anything all day, so the first thing I did was rush to the dining hall. There was so much food, I started stuffing everything into my mouth, but suddenly someone coughed behind me. Horrified, I looked around and saw the school cook, Mrs. Nelson, looked at me indignantly. What are you doing here so late? Nothing came to mind but the truth. After I told Miss Nelson my story, she was horrified and offered to contact the guardianship authorities. But just the thought of the orphanage gave me goosebumps, and I still persuaded her not to do it. Mrs. Nelson was very kind. She allowed me to eat whatever I wanted, and even cooked some more goodies. From that day on, a new life began for me. After school, I hid in the library from the guard, and when he fell asleep, I ate calmly, watched TV, and chased a ball around through the corridors. And you know what? I really liked it. No one infuriated me, did not swear, and did not tell what to do. Absolute freedom. But one day, I lost my vigilance. And when I got out of the shower in the locker room, I saw surprised classmates in front of me. I completely forgot that the teacher asked to come early that day, but I definitely wasn't going to tell everyone the truth. Therefore, I lied the first thing that came to mind. Um, a bus doused me from a puddle near the school. I was covered in dirt. In order not to come home, I had to take a shower here. It was a luck there were spare clothes in the locker. Oddly enough, classmates believed in this nonsense. At least, I was sure of it. Until the next day. Terrified, Amanda grabbed my hand. Dean, I know everything. And don't make a fool of me anymore. When you opened the locker, I noticed a big bag in there. And I also saw a toothbrush in the shower. I got suspicious and I came to your house last night. But Luke said you don't live there anymore. There was nothing to do. I had to tell Amanda everything. I was sure she would start feeling sorry for me, but instead she suggested, Do you want me to stay with you tonight? It will be more fun together, and I'll tell my parents that I spent the night with a friend. I was delighted, but then Brian appeared. He heard our conversation and also asked for a sleepover at school. I couldn't refuse him. As soon as the lessons ended, the three of us hid in the library. I waited for the loud snoring of the guard and went for a walk around the school. That day, Mrs. Nelson seemed to feel that I would not be alone, and left especially a lot of food. We ate and chatted about all sorts of trifles, and when Brian went to the bathroom, Amanda and I were left alone in the semi-darkness. She came over and hugged me. I put a bold face on and kissed her. But suddenly, there was a loud ringing. Someone broke in the kitchen. Amanda and I jumped up and saw frightened Brian. I just reached for a mug and everything collapsed. Brian pointed to the floor where there was a pile of broken plates. I was horrified. Mrs. Nelson would definitely not be happy about such a chaos. The night was hopelessly ruined. Until the morning, we collected the pieces all over the kitchen. And at the first break, I decided to apologize to Mrs. Nelson. But instead, I saw another cook. I asked her about Mrs. Nelson. At breakfast, one of the students found a fragment in the porridge. Her parents immediately came to the principal and got the cook fired. I sat down and covered my face with my hands. Because I allowed Brian to stay, an innocent woman suffered. I was very ashamed, and after school, I came to the principal's office to take all the blame on myself. But then the principal said, It's good that you came in, and I was just going to call you. This is Mrs. White, an employee of the guardianship authorities. I started shaking. Was Mrs. Nelson so offended that she turned me in after all? And so it turned out, Mr. White said that the irresponsible sister could no longer be my guardian and took me to an orphanage. As I feared, it was terrible there. We were fed disgusting slime and had to sleep on a hard, creaking bed. I missed my life at school terribly, and of course, Amanda. But the only computer in the orphanage was not connected to the internet, and I couldn't even write to her. A week later, a visitor came to me for the first time. It was my sister. I didn't want to see this traitor who so easily exchanged her blood brother for some guy. But Sue was crying so loudly that I decided to listen to her anyway. Dean, it wasn't the way you think it was. 
The day you didn't come to sleep, I saw a note on your tablet. In it, you wrote that you couldn't stand Luke anymore, and you were moving to another state to start a new life. And you leave your phone at home so that I couldn't find you. I was very scared and immediately rushed to look for you, but Luke suddenly closed the door right in my face. He took my phone, laptop, and tablet from me, and controlled my every move. I couldn't even go outside or call my friends. From a caring boyfriend, he suddenly turned into a real tyrant. I was saved by a visit from the guardianship staff after they told the whole truth about you. I stormed out of the house and ran to the police. Now this bastard will have serious problems. I clenched my fists. Not only did Luke banish me from home, he also turned my sister's life into a real hell. I comforted Sue and promised that everything would get better soon and we would live together again. But after everything that had happened, she wasn't allowed to pick me up. I lived in an orphanage for two months, and then one day I heard the long-awaited, pack your things, she came for you. I was sure it was my sister, but it was Mrs. Nelson. She hugged me tightly. My poor Dean, when I found out that you were taken to an orphanage, I couldn't find a place for myself and persuaded my husband to get custody of you. Let's go home. All the bad things are over. So I started living in Mrs. Nelson's family. There was nothing stopping me from seeing my sister now, but most of all, I was looking forward to going back to school, more precisely meeting with Amanda. And once, finally, this day came. I saw her in the school corridor. My heart was pounding wildly, when suddenly, Brian came up to Amanda and hugged her. She shook his hand off, but he stuck with her. It infuriated me. I jumped up to Brian and pushed him away from Amanda. He was obviously not happy to see me. We grappled. Brian knocked me to the floor and said through his teeth, I did everything I could to get rid of you. I framed you for the broken dishes and squealed on you to the guardianship authorities. You're always getting in the way. Amanda is mine, understand? Mine! I gathered all my strength to push Brian off, but suddenly someone hit him with a bag. He rolled to the floor and groaned. Amanda was standing over him with a smug smile. You're a lousy friend, Brian. It was hard not to agree with this. I took Amanda by the hand and led her away from this madness. From that day on, we became a couple, and I finally felt happy. Over time, Mrs. Nelson became like a mother to me. Amanda's dad gave her a job as a chef in his restaurant. Sue began to visit us often. Her pregnancy turned out to be Luke's invention. After proceedings with the police, he left for another state. I hope we never see each other again. Send this video to someone who also wants to get rid of a nasty relative.